Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Fortnite In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the tactical SMG because that weapon is insanely strong. This is another one of those very underrated weapons that a lot of people kind of poo-poo on. As soon as they pick it up, they'll throw it away for a better gun. They won't even touch it unless they're just desperate early game and you can't find anything else on the map. And it's like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll take a crossbow instead of the tactical SMG. I think that's a very foolish decision because this is an absolute sleeper weapon and a powerhouse when in the right hands. It has the highest DPS in all of Fortnite, though I will add a tiny little note at the bottom that it's tied with the gold scar and the burst itself on the blue burst. But other weapons can't compete with the tactical submachine gun. Not the other rifles, not the minigun, not the suppressed submachine gun, not the suppressed pistol, hand cannon, sniper rifle, grenade launcher. Nothing has the raw DPS of the tactical SMGs. These guns are just extremely strong in that regard. And I'm going to be talking about them today in terms of DPS, rate of fire, damage reload, and all of that, but let's take a look at the stats that are changed by rarity. As you increase in rarity, you'll get more damage, faster reload, and slightly better bloom. I do want to point out that we're mostly going to be talking about the damage and reload today, but the bloom does change by rarity, but it is extremely small. A so small, in fact, I had to slow my frames down, I had to zoom in really far, and I had to meticulously compare weapons to notice any difference whatsoever, but there was a small difference. Given the close quarters nature of this weapon and how it's a spray gun and how most people use it, I seriously doubt that it's going to be noticed by anybody, so I'm not going to focus on the bloom changes very much. Instead, we're going to be talking about damage numbers, and I do want to point out, if you see the little Discord logo and name down there below the shield in the description, that is a fan-submitted clip from our Discord community. If you'd like to join the community so that you can submit clips for in-depth or help me with testing or join me for game nights, it's linked down there below in the description or simply discord.gg slash drifter. But now let's talk about damage. The green TAC SMG will deal 16 damage per shot, the blue one will be 17 damage per shot, and the purple one will be 18 damage per shot. It's a simple one more damage per shot, stepping up as you increase in rarity. For comparison, the gray M4 will deal 30 damage, a gray pistol is 23, a green suppressed SO machine gun, which is one of a weapon that just tilts me off the face of the earth, I really dislike those suppressed submachine guns, will deal 18, and the purple TAC SMG will deal 18 as well. So when it comes to actual damage per shot, it's one of the lowest damage weapons in the game, and I think that's why a lot of people are turned off by it. It does have a very healthy headshot multiplier of 2.5x. That means that your headshots are going to be extremely important with this weapon, even though it is a spray gun. So when we're looking at tactical submachine gun headshot damage, the green one will be 40, blue will be 43, and purple will be a surprisingly strong 45 damage per shot. So yeah, damage numbers are kind of low on this gun, and headshots are alright, but that's not really the strength of the weapon. The strength of the weapon is its insane rate of fire. The tactical submachine gun fires at 720 rounds per minute, which is the same as the burst on the burst rifles, and it fires faster than any other weapon in the game. This is by far the fastest firing weapon in the game. The pistols don't compete with it, the rifles don't compete with it, even the minigun doesn't compete with the raw rate of fire of the TAC SMG. And while the rate of the burst burst itself on the burst rifles is the same, and those are very competitive weapons by the way, the overall rate of fire is much lower. So when it comes right down to it, nothing puts bullets downstream like the TAC SMG. What this means is, like I said in the beginning, it's going to have the highest damage per second in the entire game overall. So the tactical submachine gun DPS for a green one is 208, which is very impressive. That's better than all of the base rifles. A blue one is 221, which is very similar to a purple scar. And a purple tactical SMG is 234 DPS, which is tied with the gold scar. So if you were in the right kind of situation, a purple tactical submachine gun would perform just as well as the gold scar. And because of that, I think that these weapons are very, very worth picking up. I've got a few other little fun examples before we get into our body shot multipliers. You can see that DPS working in action on different types of materials here. I can shred through wood, shred through brick, and I can take down pieces of steel pretty quickly with these weapons. So now that we've discussed some base facts, let's jump into shots to kill and a few more applicable things. If you're running a green tactical submachine gun against an enemy that has only 100 health, you'll see that it takes three shots to the head or seven to the body to kill, which is more than you would really want against a person with no shields. If you're running a blue tactical submachine gun, three to the head and six to the body, not much better, but a little bit. And the story is the same for the purple tactical submachine gun. You'll notice that they don't change that much in shots to kill per tier. If you're looking at an enemy that has 
has 150 health or 50 shield and 100 health. It's four headshots and 10 body shots for the green tack SMG. It goes down one on the body if you're running the blue tack SMG, but more or less the same and more or less the same again for the purple tactical SMG. But for a person with that much health, that is a lot of shots to kill. When it comes up to having 200 health or 100 shield, 100 health, a fully maxed out health enemy that just drank a chug jug, it's going to take five headshots with the green tack SMG to kill or 13 body shots, which is just an astonishing amount of shots and it'll feel like they're just eating bullets. The blue tack SMG will still be five headshots or 12 body shots and the purple tactical SMG is the same again. So while the DPS is very high, you'll notice very quickly that it takes a lot of body shots to kill, which can be very frustrating. Thankfully, the magazine size is 35. That's very nice because you're going to need that. Because of all the shots it takes to kill people, it's going to get much harder to do this as the game progresses. Early game, when people only have 100 health, pretty easy to spray them down. If you catch somebody that's, you know, 25, 100, pretty easy. Once they start hitting about the 150 health range, and as it starts progressing toward late game, the tactical submachine gun gets a lot harder to use. It does have some other nice things going for it, like an insanely tight hipfire bloom. It is the tightest hipfire bloom in the entire game, which makes it the most laser-like weapon in the entire game. Obviously, rifles will perform a little better if you crouch and sit still, but the hipfire bloom on this gun is really good while you're running around. Now, this can work for or against you depending on your aim. If you've got really good tracking aim, you can just shred people with this and do the Lord's work. If you're more of a swipe aimer, like if you swipe the shotgun over somebody and just pull the trigger when it hits them in the head, which is what I'm doing most of the time, my tracking isn't ideal, or if you're aim is subpar, this is going to make the gun much harder to use because the tighter hipfire box is going to be a lot less generous for you, especially on consoles when auto aim is a bigger factor. However, I think the biggest downside for the tactical submachine gun is reload times. Reload times on this gun are just painfully slow. The green one is 2.4 seconds for a reload, the blue one is 2.3 seconds for a reload, and the purple is still 2.2 seconds for reload. So every single one of these guns is going to take over two seconds to reload. For comparison, a shotgun you can put in one shell at a time. Each shell is pretty quick, and each shell can theoretically get you a headshot and kill almost anyone. So you can kind of get back into combat really, really quickly. However, with the TAC SMGs, once you start the reload, you kind of have to go through the whole thing, and two seconds is a lot of downtime. That got me killed more than anything else while researching this video and getting gameplay, and it was incredibly frustrating. Overall, the tactical submachine guns are super high DPS shotgun alternatives. They, on paper at least, outperform the shotguns. On paper, they outperform the rifles. On paper, they outperform anything. And even in practice, you can shock people with these. You can shred walls. You can delete health. Especially if you're getting headshots, these can be truly terrifying guns that I think are very underrated. But they're considered alternatives for a reason. And that reason is because shotguns are simply easier to use and they insta-kill people. The tactical submachine gun requires continuous fire, really good accuracy, and really good tracking. A shotgun, you can just peek somebody, and if they show their head for an instant, you click them and they die instantly. That's a very nice vertical, but especially late game when you're peeking corners and when you're building around people and stuff, a tactical submachine gun, you'll burn a whole mag chewing through somebody's barrier, and then you'll have to wait two seconds to reload, and they'll just build the wall back. A shotgun, you can push in, and you can build around them and peek, and if your teammate shoots the barrier, the instant that barrier goes down, you can get a ton of damage on before they can build a new one, and that's why I think the shotguns are still over Overall better than the TAC SMG, but I do want to tell you the TAC SMG is very good. It's a very strong weapon, and I've noticed a lot of people now that the double pump is nerfed, they're experimenting with more things, you know, they'll run a pump shotgun and a TAC, but I've seen an increasing number of people run a pump shotgun and then TAC SMG as the backup, so they're going to tag you with the pump shotgun to deal either the 90 instant damage or the, the metric ton of headshot damage, whatever that happens to be, and then they'll swap to the tactical submachine gun because they know that you're low, and they'll just suppress you down with two three shots because if you're going to run you know another pump shotgun you have a big downtime between your shot even the tactical shotgun has some downtime between the shots but if somebody's one or two shot you can just hose them with this while you dodge bullets and jump a couple bullets will hit them they'll be dead for good and you know it works but that's not really the way i like it 
Personally, I like to use this gun early game. Early game, I believe this gun dumps all over kids. Medium range, long range, close range, all sorts of disgusting ranges. The later the game goes on, the harder it is to use, but I do use it to punish weak players late game. If anybody gets shot, if they take a rocket, if they take a shotgun, if they get weak, I'm gonna break out the TAC SMG and I am gonna go in spraying and praying, and I promise you that it'll work. So the tactical submachine gun, highest DPS in the game, insanely strong weapons, in the hands of somebody that can aim, especially if you're getting headshots and you know what you're doing, but it doesn't offer all of the same tactical advantages that a shotgun would. That being said, I strongly encourage all of you to pick one of these up and just give them a try. You might like it, it might be your new favorite thing on the planet. I know people that will drop certain tiers of shotguns and replace them with tactical submachine guns because they like them better. So give it a try and I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoyed this episode as well. I hope you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.